Well, good morning, and welcome to another week of Journey with Christ. I'm your host, Mark Mitchell, a preaching minister here at the Park Avenue Church of Christ in Charleston, West Virginia. With me, as usual, is Steve Fox, a preaching minister for all, for 50 years in the Canal Valley. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing fine. Um, <laughs> now that I've goofed up the first part. <laughs> well, you know, that happens sometimes. I, I Sometimes I can't remember what I'm supposed to say either. So. Yeah. I mean, if, if all of us were perfect. Of course, hopefully I can edit most of my mistakes out of this. Are you going to edit this part out too? No, I'm leaving this one oh. in where we're talking about <laughs> no. it. Well, just uh, try to get a grip on it, and uh, and we'll do fine. I'll kind of hold your hand and take you along as we go. Well, I appreciate that. You're welcome. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, last week, we ended in the very first part of Revelations chapter 8, after discussing Revelations chapter 7, and we had some interesting things going on in <laughs> Revelations chapter 7. You know... I'm going to get some of our pictures out. Well, while you're looking for those pictures, there's one thing that I'm continually reminded of as we study this book. And that is that all of us should be reminded of chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, where John introduces this. And as he introduces the things that he sees, he says, God is giving him, the angel is giving him things which must shortly take place. That's right. And verse 3 says, which, which must come, the time is near and must come to pass. So, you and I are in a situation where there may be a lot of things that we don't understand, but we have to keep that one thing in the back of our mind, that this is written to first century churches. They were studying it. They were being, there was an advantage that they had these, the, the, had these seven letters. But you also have to remember that they were, talking about things that had been revealed to John. They were being prepared for something. Exactly. In the first century. In the first century. Yes. Yeah, there was an event and, you know, you and I were talking about before we began uh, our recording, I told you as I was restudying what we've been studying, um, I kind of thought to myself, you know, first few chapters we've got this amazing scene in the throne room of God of angels and worshiping and singing and all these people and angels and they're all doing this wonderful thing and then all of a sudden we open these uh, seventh seal and now we've got trumpets and so every time this trumpet sounds something happens and it's not necessarily good uh, and well, just think of what it, what is designated when the angel, and and you've got God, he must like the number seven. Yes. Because you've got seven angels, you've got seven churches, you've got seven scrolls, seven seals, seven trumpets. They're, they're all important, but as, as each trumpet is played, I don't know, he played two notes or a song or... Or seven ten, notes. Yeah, seven notes. <laughs> He could, yeah, a good idea. That's in the NIV. Place, <laughs> but this whole time, those things are all important. And as each one, as the seal's broken, as the scrolls, and, and you also know from the Old Testament that trumpets were important because when Moses or Aaron or somebody in the Old Testament wanted to gather people together, mm -hmm. somebody would sound a trumpet. Yeah. Well, and... Uh, anytime the king or anybody showed up, I mean, it was a huge fanfare mm -hmm. as far as musical instruments, declarations, and so forth. And last week, we ended on Revelations chapter 8, uh, the very, but when he opened, and I'm going to go ahead and read that, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel, who had a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, 
filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. That's where we ended last week. And now we go into a new storyline, which this is the moment, if you were doing it on a, on a video, where you would hear that ominous music playing in the background. Da, da, da. I like in um, Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah. What was the name of that? Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah. Richard Dreyfus. Yes. That's the kind of music you're... Um, as you read the first part of that, where there's a uh, silence, there's seven scrolls with seven seals and seven trumpets, and then it, he starts chapter 8 by saying there was this period of a half an hour of silence. And as we talked about last week, that was, that was anticipation. They, they were waiting for something to happen. And so for a half an hour, nobody ever said anything. So that great anticipation. They were looking forward to something. Um, when Scott and, and Stormy were little, they, they had some spats every once in a while. And their really, really awful dad made them sit on the couch with their arms around each other. And they had to sit there with their arms around each other for half an hour. If they got up or said anything or took their arm off of the other over. one, we started the 30 minutes over again. Well, here, these people are just waiting in great anticipation, and everybody is silent. Before, you, you said you mentioned the, the activity. Oh, everything's busy and everything going on with the angels and the trumpets. But now, everybody's just sitting there waiting what's going to happen next. What's going to happen? And then it happens. Yes. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the gra green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet. And a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers. On the springs of water, that name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, stars. so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. And as I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair, calling out, call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. Now, you read that, and I, and I put a clip up here, woe, woe, to those who dwell on the earth. I mean, really? It wasn't already bad enough with the first four? I mean, a third. That's all we heard. Keep, hear, keep being repeated. A third is gone. A third of this is gone. A third of this is gone. I mean, we're right now as a world all encompassed in a pandemic and we're looking at three four percent and being upset mm -hmm. that's not thirty three percent here's thirty three percent yeah if you put everything together what you have John saying is there are going to be all these natural disasters yes on the earth and obviously humankind mankind is going to be directly affected by that yeah it, it is uh, um, again, the contrast is, uh, to me, overwhelming. We have this pristine heaven, and then we have this earth that in a moment's notice, the flash of a trumpet, the world could change. Mm -hmm. And you could lose a third of it at the sound of a note. Uh, that is just... 
can you imagine you're a first century Christian and you're thinking to yourself, somebody just, and you don't have movie theaters, okay? <laughs> and somebody just told you all these things that they have always, now they've seen most of this stuff. They've, they've experienced bitter water. They've experienced fires. They've experienced volcanoes, earthquakes. Uh, now the sun and the moon losing a third of it. I mean, I know there's, uh, the moon, there's a stage that you lose a third of the moon, but it, it's right, it's still there. It's just you don't And that see. has to do with the sun. So yeah, if the sun's light's gone out, the moon's going to be So you got all of this it. stuff, and all of it is bad. Well, this one star is kind of interesting. Wormwood? He's bad, too. This, this star that falls out of the skies. And uh, I think in is, is it called is he called the destroyer or is that no that's later in chapter nine yeah he's called bitter yeah and it affects all the water and when the water you know I've been in places in our season my travels our limited mission work where you didn't have good water you couldn't drink and it's right there in front of you and you can't drink it. That's what Wormwood is doing. That's what this star is doing. He's messing up some of their water sources. Yeah, I know. A lot of people today, grow right now, have no concept of the fact that you could have bad water. But you, I don't know about you, but I grew up and we would visit people and everybody had wells. And you come across the, the people every now and then. I remember this one people's house we went to all the time. And uh, their well was terrible. Mm -hmm. Their well water was terrible. Mm -hmm. You took a drink of it and I mean it was just like you wanted to immediately. But they gotten used to it. Well we are immediately blessed when you go and take your cup and go like <laughs> yeah. fill up from tap water that you can drink. Yeah you didn't have to most of the world doesn't get to do that. Or walk half a mile mm -hmm. to go get your water. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a creek by my house but I still wouldn't want to drink that water. <laughs> Not today. We had a creek Maybe in back the woods in the behind our house where my grandma and my mom always said, do not drink out of that creek. Well, the six or seven of us that grew up in that neighborhood, I wasn't going all the way back to the house to get a drink. I'm going to drink. D d d didn't affect us any. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't affect us at all. Well, do you have anything? I mean, that part of it is kind of straightforward. The next part is the part that, to me, is just kind of... Uh, the next part is kind of... He's throwing out these things, just as he threw out, and we talked about natural disasters, and it was going to really get bad. In the first paragraph, can I read the first paragraph in 9, or you want to say something no, go else ahead. about 8? No. The fifth angel blew his trumpet. Here's another trumpet. And I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. He was given the key of the shaft of the bottomless pit. Now you talk about imagery. Well, wait. A key is used to open up something. And John was going to, the angel gave him this key to open up, open up what? A bottomless pit. To the now, shaft of the abyss. Now yeah. that has to be some kind of, uh, it, it's not something literal because you can't have a bottomless pit. When, every time I read this, I grew up in northern Ohio and there was a uh, tourist attraction where for, I think it was two dollars back when I was a little boy, for two dollars you could walk up and look down and the, there had the fence, you could look down that hole. Well, they had brought the Navy in. It's, it, was, it was in Castalia, Ohio, and I think it was around Bellevue. They had brought the Navy in, and they had all their equipment that they had that they used in the oceans and stuff. Mm -hmm. They kept dropping it down, dropping it. They couldn't find a bottom. Now, I haven't looked at that recently. I don't know if they found it now, but back then when I was a little boy, and you paid two bucks to go looking down there and see something that you couldn't see down there anyway. But th this, this is some, uh, this is John's way, or the angel's way of saying, there's something here that you need to address. And that is that there is a pit that doesn't have a bottom in it. You can't go all the way down. So it has something to do with the natural disasters that are happening. Mm -hmm. The shaft of the bottomless pit, and now he has a key to it. The angel has given John this key. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. 
and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Now, something is coming out of that. You got a really good picture there. Something yeah. is coming out of that shaft. Yeah, uh, and you're about to, and out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass or, of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of a sting of a scorpion when it strikes. And during those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. Um, I actually have a picture, but I'm, I was going to save it, and I'm going to save it, of what these locusts look like. But imagine a locust in their world view was what ate all the stuff that they needed to eat. Mm -hmm. Well, these locusts are not going to touch anything that's green. They're only going after those who do not have the approved seal of God. Now, of all the parts... But that, again, they're part of the destruction. They are the part of the destruction, but the first part the people on the earth are going to be participating in that part, mm -hmm. the first four. Mm -hmm. The earth cakes, the, the, the bitter water, all those things, it could just as impact them as it could those who uh, didn't have the seal on their head. But this one says, no, nah, these are only coming after those who do not have the seal on their head. This is God's army coming after those we asked the, our audience last week to keep looking for the judgment scenes. Yeah. Somebody's rewarded, <clears throat> excuse me, because they did something right and obeyed God. Other people, uh, it's, not, it's not good for them that day or that month or that year because something is happening to them. I apologize for that. Oh, that's okay. You, well, I know the guy that edits this stuff. So. <laughs> well, it, it, it will make it in there because it happened when you were saying something. I will. <laughs> Uh, when the angel sounds and this one seal is opened up and the s and scroll is opened up, that's when you see all these insects, like you were talking about, the scorpions and the, and the locusts. And they were told not to harm the grass, so wait for a little bit. There was an hour, there was a half an hour of silence, wait for a little bit, and then you can go do what you're supposed to do. Um, starting with verse 7, and... And you said it's difficult to figure out what they look like. I'm going to tell you in just a minute exactly what these well, I've got a picture. What these scorpions look like. Well, no, locusts. Oh, the locusts. The, the locusts are first, and then the scorpions. Well, they have. So you got a picture. They have of both the ability of to be. They have the sting. Like a scorpion. Of a scorpion. Yeah. Well, let's let's sort of like let's read the detail. <laughs> Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Sting like a scorpion. <laughs> Um, well, let's look at the characteristics, and then, and then I want now just to prove that I am not making this up for our listening audience. I want you to look right there and tell our listening audience that I am not lying. Right there in the bottom, there's a there are a couple words you see in the margin. You see in the margin of that? Okay, I'm going to tell you what the scorpions look like. All right. <laughs> Do you know, you already know what they look like? Uh, well, can you read that? It was small printing. I, I can small read it. Okay. Um, the, the locusts were like horses arrayed for battle. On their heads were, were crowns of gold. Their faces were like human faces. Their hair like women's hair. And their teeth like lion's teeth. Um, Fifteen years ago at Kanawha City, I was teaching an adult class on Sunday morning. And we had a lovely couple, both of them, Kenny and Goldie, are both deceased now. But he was hard of hearing, and she often had to repeat things that were being said from the pulpit or being said from the front of the church building. And she had to repeat what was said because he couldn't hardly hear anything. I said he couldn't hardly hear anything. What? Yeah. <laughs> and so we were, I don't remember why, but we were studying Revelation and I was teaching the class, and we got down to this part about the, about the scorpions and the locusts. 
and it said they had uh, faces like a human face, or some translations say face like a man's face. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth like lion's teeth. And Kenny leaned over and said to Goldie, What'd he say? And she said, He said they looked like Willie Nelson. <laughs> well, you lost it. It took me a while to get control of the class. <laughs> it took at least two or three minutes to get control of the class. And I was laughing so hard that I had to wait until later to, and, and I've never regretted doing this. In the margin of my Bible, I wrote down Willie Nelson and the date that Goldie said that. Mm. I mean, she was explaining what what they looked like. Well, her visual and the artist's yours any better than artist that? rendering <laughs> visual is a little different. <laughs> uh, that's not Willie Nelson. That what? looks like something pretty from, close from a punk rock group. Uh, Kiss, possibly. Yeah, and. Uh, and I love the fact that they used the, the sixth verse as the uh, during those days people will seek death but will not find it. They will long to die but death will elude them. And he, here comes the stinging death. Mm -hmm. um, and they had breastplates. They had their hair was like women's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had as a king over, the, over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollon, that is, destroyer. Destroyer. Um, as ugly as that thing is on your picture there, multiply that by five or multiply that by ten. And that's, yeah, what, that, that's what you had these people in the first century dealing with. I mean, I have actually seen, you know, that Mothman thing up in, which is kind point of, pleasant. point you know, kind of eerie looking. Um, but can you imagine at any moment in your life if you saw a creature like this, he wouldn't have to sting you. <laughs> the mere presence of him would kill me, probably. Probably, yeah. Because a heart attack is pretty much inevitable here, you know. And this is the circumstance that John is describing, though I know it is figurative in nature. There is enough of it to be true that we're not sure what happen I keep I century. keep waiting for that figure to start singing to all the girls I've loved. Don't before. quit. Oh, okay, I'll quit. Uh, I know several of them if you'd like to <laughs> if we need to make the tape a little bit longer. I know several There are really songs. many Will and Nelson fans yes. who probably don't appreciate oh, okay, your all right. reference. <laughs> but um, and verse 12 The first woe is past. Two more are yet to come. Oh, excuse me. What Before we start 12, I have a little trivia question here about 11. Okay. There are three. I'm going to put you on the spot. All right. There are three named angels in the Bible. You know who they are? Well, there's Gabriel. Yep. Uh, Starts with an M. Now, I've, lo I've lost it. Michael. Bingo! You got two of them. The, uh, there's only there's only three angels named in the Bible. One of them's Gabriel, one of them's Michael, and one of them is Wormwood. No, no, that's the star. Okay. That's bitter. But look in verse. Oh, the angel of the abyss. Abion. Abaddon. There, there's one nasty angel, and it means uh, what does it mean? Destroyer. Destroyer. So. Apion is a one of the devil's angels, mm -hmm. and he's the only one that has the privilege of being named in the Bible, along with Gabriel and Michael. Yeah, well, that's just if you're ever trivia. On, yeah, it's just if you're ever on Jeopardy. Jeopardy, and you don't know the answer. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah and it, that definitely that's interesting in the fact that of this angel of the abyss, who's. Uh, <laughs> 
whose name uh, speaks of what he does. Mm -hmm. That would be like, you know, we've got the judge, we've got the prosecutors, you know, they're all, they have titles that denote what they do. This one here, he his title is the destroyer. He destroys. Verse Not a lot of hope in that. No. Verse 13. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. 200,000. No, 10,000 times 10,000 twice to the second power. So did I do the math right? It's 200,000, right? No. It's more than that? More than that. Okay. 2,005? No. Well, you're going to make me pause this thing. <laughs> Again, it's... Okay, do the math for me. All right. Um, I've got written down here it's 200,000. I must be wrong. Oh, here I got... 200 million. 200... See what that says right there? 200 million. million. I'm even wrong when I'm right. All right. We had a pause there for a second. 10,000 times 10,000 twice is 200 million. Well, since you're going to take that out, I remember watching TV programs when I was a little boy. They had dogs and cats. And at the, they would always say, we pause for station identification. <laughs> we, okay. This is the Park Avenue channel. Uh, the horses and riders I saw in my vision look like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horse resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in the tails, for the tails were like snakes having heads with what they inflict injury. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still not, did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of the murders, their magic arts, their sexual morality, or their thefts. You see that judgment in there? Well, the amazing they, they, thing some is... Some of them repented. They're running out of thirds. Uh-huh. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> if each one of them kills a third, there's not anything left. Exactly. Um, it's people that repent and probably a very, very small minority who are changing their mind about some things and going, going to obey God and going to obey this letter. This is, again, to the extent of we understand literal and figurative understanding uh, on this is difficult because John records some very interesting uh, descriptive terms and descriptive uh, language that actually literally allows you to paint a picture. You don't have to guess at the visions. No. You may have to guess at what the visions mean, mean, but you don't have to guess what they look like. And most of them are looking pretty bad and very horrible. Again, we, for me, it's we go from one scene of heaven, which mm -hmm. is unreal, beautiful and then the opposite the worst thing you can think of um, I have a person I like to study and, and read some of his stuff he talks about and, and I've, I've talked about this from the pulpit 
for the to the degree of beauty you can have the, in God's realm of understanding and truth to the degree of beauty you can have the degree of ugly and revelation shares a degree of beauty and a degree of ugly and you're right beauty lasts forever no beauty is transient <laughs> beauty is temporary but ugly is forever ugly is forever yeah. well I had that turned around actually uh, in the analogy of that analogy would be completely incorrect because the beauty of heaven is supposed to be eternal I was talking about on the earth I know what you were um, what does this sound like to you? I'm going to put you on the spot again. Fire and sapphire and sulfur and the heads of the horses were like lions. Fire and smoke and sulfur issued from their mouths. Old Testament, what's that sound like? Uh, that's hell. Yes, hell. And one of the examples that New Testament writers use to explain what hell is like is Sodom and Gomorrah yep. and this fire that destroyed them completely. And this... And we all know the sulfur smell. I mean, sulfur not only just has an ugly smoke to it, but it has a horrendous smell. It stinks. When it burns, it is, it's disgusting. I mean, it's just, <laughs> you talk about it. I don't think I've ever smelled sulfur. Maybe I have, but just didn't know it. I have smelled fire and I've smelled smoke. Well, it smells like uh, rotten eggs. It's, that's the smell of sulfur. Oh. Mm. So, yeah, and um, I don't know if any, have you ever watched uh, The Lord of the Rings? No, I, I don't have much of a life, but no, I haven't watched any well, of it. Well, Lord of the Rings is a very good uh, book, you know, and, and they made the movies out of it. I know people who got very addicted to it because it's that good. Oh, it's that good. And yeah. some of the characters, some of the things that are described are actually in some of these uh, pictures. There's a resemblance that here and there, you know, of things. And the very, of course, in Narnia, we've got some of the, we've got the lion, we've got the horse with a man's body on it. It's and, Lewis's way of teaching the gospel to little children. Yep. Yeah. But this is not to little children. All, all, I, all I see here are scary, scary, scary things. Things that, as that one person you talked about early on, that would scare, didn't like to read this book because it scared them. Yeah. She wouldn't read it at night. <laughs> yeah, well... You know, up you get up to chapter seven, you're okay. Mm -hmm. You get to eight, so it's over with. And if you can make it up through twenty, twenty one, twenty two, you're really okay. You're you're back to the, the good part again. But there's always just this understanding. Again, I keep repeating this, but I just think it's the vital choose where you want to be. Yes. Wisely. Well, here's another description of why they were in trouble. They did not repent of the works of their hands, nor gave up worshiping demons and idols, gold and silver and bronze and stone and wood, which cannot either see or hear. Nor he said, why would you worship gold and silver and bronze and stone? They can't see you. They can't hear you. They can't walk down the street with you. So why would you worship them? Nor did they repent of their, now what's that lead to? Their murders or their sorceries or their immorality or their thefts. Disbelief in God and disbelief in what He's trying to do will lead you into the direction of immorality. And so there's, He says these people are not repenting of that. They're going to pay it judgment. And there's a paradigm which that verses uh, 20 through 21 uh, describe a condition which, if you want to look at our world, is rampant in mm -hmm. of the 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 worshiping of demons and, and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. And uh, there's, there's no longer any repentance. And, re and understand, repentance in this is a condition of being sorry for what you've done. There's no, 
There's no remorse whatsoever in people who murder. The, they're chasing after sexual immorality, the sorcery. The, and you may think, oh, that doesn't happen. That happens in a lot oh, of. Yeah. That, that happens a lot because horoscopes can be part of sorcery. So I mean, it's just not just willy nilly nothing. I mean, you don't have to go all the way to Wicca to get to get to sorcery, mm -hmm. and then thefts. The stealing of stuff from one another. That I'm, goes back to I am important. Yeah. And what you are, you you are insignificant. You're and insignificant. if I can take what you have, that's too bad because I'm the one that's It is the important circumstance of, mm -hmm. of uh, the world we live in today. Of If I have power and I can take it, there's nothing wrong with that. You know where the power ends up most of the time? I mean, in the bad sense of the word, you have some property and I'd like to have it. That's right. That's how wars are started. Yeah. Okay. And inevitably, the one with the most power oh, yeah. ends up with it all. But in God's storyline, he knows who has the most power. You want to play this game? <laughs> well, just, just look at for a minute. And I hate to pick out certain people, but just, well, I don't. But just think of Hitler and Mussolini and some of the other dictators that have lived the way they've lived and influenced the countries of which they have led. Um, they didn't repent of their works of their hands or worshiping demons or worshiping idols. They were more concerned about gold, silver, and bronze, stone, and wood. Man, that just, that details some of those men and how they acted and how they got their countries in trouble. Um, the, you know, the great part of this judgment scene is if they repent of that, God says, I'll put, you, I'll put you in with the right group of people. You know, you're sitting there on the sidelines, so to speak, in this narrative uh, as a first century Christian, knowing the circumstances that is going on around you as far as earthquakes and the turmoil that's going to be there. But to, to, but to get, be given in a roundabout way some good news in the fact, yeah, some of this bad's going to happen. But do you see what's heck coming for the people who don't choose God? Trust me. It will seem like, as Paul put it, it, it will seem like this present suffering is no big deal mm -hmm. for what's going to happen to those who do not choose God. And this that's the story. That is the, in, bring it down to the bottom line. That's the narrative of, <laughs> it's bad for if you don't choose Christ. And it's not because you're getting punished, it's because of the choice you've made. You know, it, it's like you've said, there is no God, and God says, okay, I'll let you have that one. There is no God now. Yeah. But see what there is? There's some bad stuff. Romans 1 and Romans 2 addresses that. Yeah. If, if you go against the will of God, you're going to end up doing a whole lot of things that are going to be very dangerous and very significant to you. And, you know, you and I have talked about this before. There's a whole lot of things in the, in the scriptures that say, okay, is this God doing this with a person or is this a person deciding this on his own? And you can talk about the election and who's called and who's going to do right and who's going to do wrong. Mm -hmm. But these pictures in Revelation, it's amazing to me how over and over you've got these judgment scenes and the people who did right and the people who did wrong. Now, right now, I don't want to get into a big discussion about how that happens, but this, these scenes like you've got right there are pretty obvious that there's two groups of people. Yeah, Those people that are trying to obey God and those people who just turned him down and say, I'm going to live the way I want to live. Well, uh, again, Romans 8 uh, talks about and 9 talk about who has the seal on their head and who doesn't. And uh, so it's, yeah, there is a judgment. But the beauty of it is, Steve, is who decides who gets the seal? I do. Mm -hmm. I choose God. I get the seal. It, it, it's not like 
And if I don't choose God, when I say I don't want God, I've said to God, okay, I don't want you. And God says, okay, that's your choice. But and we please understand. And we studied in one of the letters, one of the seven letters at the beginning, Jesus says there's nothing worse than lukewarm water. Yeah. Make up your mind. mind. Are you going to be hot or are you going to be cold? Either do it or don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> do it or get out of the way. Or off the park. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help myself. <laughs> uh, I didn't know there was anything in there where they talked about pot, but may maybe I missed it. There's a... Uh, Bronze right. and stone and wood, yeah. gold and silver, but uh, no pots. No, no pots. Yeah, and they talked about the walking thing, so I, you know, hey. Anyway, um, if you would start reading from the real Bible instead of the NR NIV, we wouldn't have all this trouble. Oh, you started to say NRV. I started to say the NRV. <laughs> You're a bad influence. Uh, you can cut that part out. Well, I don't want people to know that I said that. We have completely ran out of time. Good. We, yes. <laughs> Um, I hope everyone ha is enjoying where we're going. Re we will be in Revelations 10, 10 and hope maybe probably 11. And here's your homework for next week. When John eats this little book, something tastes like something. And then when he, it's in his stomach for a while, it tastes something a little bit different. That's a very interesting concept in Revelation. Look at that and see if you can... Well, we're about ready to get into some things that we just have. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm going to be... We're getting ready to get into some things where we're going to just jump over. <laughs> yeah, well, and I'm still going to find the pictures because I hope you find um, some visual stimulus, stimulation to these because... I think it helps. It oh, really. I think stuff like that's beautiful. I mean, it just it gives you something like, okay, if I saw that, what do I do with that? You know. Do we have a picture of John eating that little? No, bit? I haven't got them. I haven't okay. got them all okay. yet. I, I I get them every week, and but anyway, well, listen. So glad you joined us. Look forward to seeing you again next week. And if you have any questions, any comments, you know how to do it. You, it will be at the end of the video. And on behalf of Steve and I, see you next week.